Uh, but onto the women's. So the course, pretty simple to preview. It's literally half. It's just 22Ks and, and half the climbing, 380 metres climbing. Uh, 1.52 k's at 6% the middle climb, but there's other roller climbs in there. More of a head-to-head, the way the market's seeing it, between Diget and Anna van der Breggen. It's actually got Diget as the favourite, which I think is outrageous, personally. Is uh, So the big names are Diget, van der Breggen, van Leuten, Marlon Roos of the Swiss, Emma Norsgaard, Dane, Brenau, Elisa Longobod, Guinea, Giganti, Amber Neven, Moorman, Passio, Grace Brown, Lebu. Uh, Leah Kirchman, and then we've got big, big long shots. So the market's really like Dyke at two dollars, Van der Breggen two ten, Van Vleuten five fifty. It's seeing it as a two horse race with Van Vleuten possibly doing well. I think with this climbing, with the uh, Dyke look good in the road race. Don't get me wrong. I think Van der Breggen should still be the favourite on this parkour, Benji. I think so as well because while Dyke was looking good, she did drop towards the end of Dauchi Road, and she eventually came back with her pink. Uh, shoes at the back of the group and attached her wagon back to the front group. So she did have that weakness on the climb there. So that shows me that Thunder Bregan is probably going to perform well and better here. Although I don't think the difference is going to be as high as we're perceiving right now. I think that Diger could really, really still perform really sure. well on this parkour. But the thing with Thunder Bregan is the last time trial she did was the one at the Italian race, Giro Don, right? I swear I saw that she literally brought multiple riders out of the time limit because her time trial was so fast. (laughs) That is very rare on a time trial. And it's not like one or two riders. It was multiple riders. One, two, three, off. At least like 10, 10. 11, 12. Over 10. Crazy (laughs) stuff. And her performance was so like crazy that she performed a solid minute better than Vollering on a parkour of like 11 kilometers. It was an uphill one though, so that hill does matter here. And looking at the people in that race, there's not too many people that are also on the start list. So it's hard to use that compared to people that are on the start list for the women's ITT here. I think that we indeed have to look at those two, but not forget fully about Von Vleuten because... It's obviously still got climbs in it, and we know that Van Vleuten's a pretty good rider when the road goes uphill, so I would not forget about that. She's done decent TTs in the past as well, and I think she's won TTs in the past, definitely. So, yeah, those are the three riders I'm looking at. For me, it's Van der Breggen, who is the better of the three. Does that mean that an outsider can't win? It's always possible, but I find it unlikely. It's much more unlikely than in the road race. Anna Kiesenhofer is not here because her country was not performing well enough in the last years in, in the races to qualify a rider for the time trial. And she would potentially have top 15 here based on her performances of the last few years, twice world champion ITT and so forth. So it would have been interesting because she's pretty much a fan favorite now. But uh, Emma Norsgaard, you mentioned her. I think that she's better at prologues and shorter time trials. Yeah, it's too hilly. 14 kilometers was the f- was one where she got fourth in healthy aging tour that was the one with the huge wind and oh yeah, that was crazy yeah that was in, like. <laughs> insane and then we've got prologues where she got 10 a team time trial you can't really look at that so yeah i she think that we don't have enough to call emma Norsgaard for a top three here and i think it'll be hard for a top five as well personally i think no that i'm shot. looking at other people bren our top five seems like a lock for me yeah, I prefer people who have climbing pedigree uh, to go top five. Sarah Giganti, I know it's outrageous, but she's she's a good time trial. She's a young Australian. That's true. She's a good time trial. She's super light. Um, Gold medal, right? No, no. no <laughs> I'm just thinking of someone for because say it's hard to say Diger crashes again or just really suffers That's not on the hills. Also, but yeah, yeah. Say that happens, then maybe Giganti. Uh, where'd she come in the, in the Australia? Yeah, she won the Australian National Champs on a hard, hot conditions, always there, sort of 40k an hour average TT, 40 minutes TT. So Giganti top five. I think she'll beat Brown, to be honest. Um, I'd expect her to beat Brown. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to see her do well. And then maybe Marlon Roos is really good though, the Swiss TT runner. So my, my, can you remember Benji, when, before Diet crashed, she was going to win, by the way. Don't forget, everybody. Yeah. Diet was going to win the Imola World Champs TT. By a lot. Like, it was, she was up by like 25, 30 seconds, I think. Yeah. And she, that's why she needed to take the corner that hard. 
Uh, that course is very different. Obviously, we just spoke about the men's and how, you know, Ghana won last year, but very different here. I, I do think, yeah, I just think the climbing just puts it so much more in, in Van der Breggen's favour, uh, as well as, yeah, maybe Benji Van Vleuten. Like, do you think we can take anything from the road race and say Van Vleuten's shape is actually better than Van der Breggen's right now? We don't know that because we don't know how they would have raced if they knew the time gaps in that race properly. And as a consequence, we don't know if Van der Breggen would have gone for a solo at some point, if Van Vleuten's attacks would fail, stuff like that. So eventually Van der Breggen was just brought into a, a place where she had to work at the end. And that ended up happening. She attacked once or twice. She was there over the climb and towards the end. Dijkert was not over the top of the climb. So that's the difference I see there. But compared to like Van Vleuten, sure, she had the attack in the end. She had the attack on the climb. She was performing really well. She's probably in a a decent shape, let's say. <laughs> so I think that Van Vleuten can always surprise, but it just doesn't shout Van Vleuten to me. We also need to keep in mind that Van der Breggen, this is the only race that she was looking for this year. This is her main goal exactly. because this is the one she doesn't have on her palmarès. This is why she waited and made sure that she retires after an Olympic year. This is why this is her goal. And I think that's going to do a lot and hopefully it doesn't bring too much pressure because that probably gives pressure, but I think she's experienced enough to handle that with full effect and have no issues with that. So I think that's why Van der Breggen wins and Tiger is second and Van Vleuten third. I just want to give a shout out to Amber Nieben. She's also racing on the start list for the United States. She's 46 years old. She's won two world champs like DTs. She's good on a hilly parkour. She was second behind diet in the recent US national champs, only 27 seconds behind on a 45K an average course. She came fourth in the world champs at Harrogate two years ago on a punchy course, uh, 40 seconds behind Van Vleuten in third. Just, just a crazy story. She's at the Olympics and she's probably going to top five. Um, I'd, be, I'd expect her maybe top five here. Um, do you remember Benji on that Harrogate course? I just I just looked it up and I'm shook by it. Do you know how the winning margin of Daigert over Van der in the TT? Wasn't it like super huge? Ninety seconds, ninety two seconds. Crazy. Like, and that was a punchy course. So maybe I am underrating Daigert. Maybe I'm. Uh, that was also longer. That was thirty kilometers long. But I think there's more climbing here. It'd be really interesting. It's correct that they're close. I have I have ABDB first. I have oh. My podium is AVDB winning and then I can't split Van Vleuten and Dijk and I don't know which one will turn up on the day. Probably AVDB, uh, Van Vleuten as well for second just because of all the climbing. But, yeah, it's For me, it's the other way around. <laughs> for me, it's Dijk <Dyger> second. <laughs> okay. Amber Neven fourth, Sarah Giganti fifth, <laughs> top five. Has to have that Australian top five, right? <laughs> uh, I think that I'll have Brennauer in, in fifth and Royster uh, in fourth. True, yeah. That's mine. Anyway, pretty be a pretty interesting race. I think Daigert, uh, she hasn't raced in since joining Canyon Shram, she hasn't raced in Europe at all. The road race, Olympic road race, the first main race she's done on the road uh, this year. Uh, I'm not sure what she's doing afterwards, whether she's doing Paris Bay or not. Would obviously love to see her doing that. But yeah, it'd be really interesting to see her against uh, go against ABDB and whether the Dutch women can right the wrongs of yesterday but yeah we hope you enjoyed the preview of the men and women's olympic tt starting on early wednesday morning if you're in uh europe i think americans if you stay up late you'll be able to watch it australians you got no problems i don't know why i left i'd be able to watch it at a normal time thanks to Nicole for supporting the podcast and you as always and we'll see you with the recap of the tts after it on wednesday ciao